Welcome to Mastering Life's Adventures, an educational podcast about tapping into your true self, the soul, your soul, the substance of your life, to discover what life's ups and downs are really about, and how to have a greater sense of purpose, peace, joy, and fulfillment. I am Dr. Judith Holder, your host, coach psychologist, fellow seeker, who enjoys diving into the connections between spirituality, psychology, wellness, and your everyday life's adventures. All preparing and polishing you like the fastest of magnificent diamond to be your best self. If you're craving more from your life, you are in the right place. Come, let's journey together and transforming what you know into who you really are. Mastering Life's Adventures begins now. Hi, I'm back with Cole Bershaback to talk further because we had such a delightful conversation in part one. So I invite you to go back and listen to that. This time, we're going to be talking about something that was fascinating and stood out for me that I think it really ties into this whole notion of not only families, children, but we as seekers as well, and as we're moving forward. And the topic is the quickest way to train the mind is to train the body. Yes. (laughs) So this is, I'll, I'll share a little bit about my own experience that really shifted the way I thought about this. So um, I grew up as an athlete, not an overly gifted one, but as an athlete, played several sports and was always very fit. So on the last episode, I shared, you know, this circumstance I had gone through where I had a lot of injuries and it took quite an amount of time to just be able to walk again. And so I, Now I had this experience where I had been an athlete. I was studying dietetics. I cared about nutrition. This was important to me. And now I was living in a body that had almost no muscular tone, had could barely walk without pain. Like I had these two Mm. very different experiences inside of one year. (laughs) So it was so obvious to me that this felt even after I had healed from the injuries that being in an unfit, untrained body was not going well for my mind, for my emotions, for my focus, the, the not seeing part of my physical self was having a very different experience than Mm -hmm. I was used to living in. Mm -hmm. And so fast forward many years and I become a yoga instructor and learn more about like, why did the yogis historically have this path where you did asana practice first, right? Like, and um, oh, light bulb, right? It's like, of course, when the body is not stable, when the body is not capable of balance, when the body is not capable of flexibility or range of motion, Mm -hmm. guess what? That's the same thing that is happening in the mind. Mm -hmm. And so this lens to see the body as a way to train the mind. And I would even take it, you know, past that as a way to train the emotions, as a way to train the energetics of the system. Um, The body is the avenue for that as a starting point. And if it is not cared for, I mean, this is, I don't want to be too harsh, but like stand by the results of that are significant. And even if they don't feel like an unclear mind, maybe they start to feel like disease or now I have a lung condition and I breathe really fast. And what is that doing to my mind, right? Like there, there's this whole spectrum of things that can happen. And they, sometimes they're very subtle and sometimes they're super obvious, but, but the body is holding our soul. It is holding our mind. It is holding our energy. And if it doesn't have capacity, how can those other things have their greatest capacity and potential? when the body is essentially 
like cut off <laughs> from the rest of the system. Right. It, it really ties into this segmentation that go on with our uh, rearing of our lives. We think our body's different from our mind. Our mind is different from our feelings. Our feelings are different from our behaviors, but it's all holistically related together and tied into each other. And I remember when I was growing up, my, my father and my, my mother would consistently say, a sound body, sound mind. Mm. Sound body. So they were very much passionate into what do you put into your mouth? <laughs> it comes into your body. It has an impact upon your whole energetic system. And so 100%. be keenly aware, you know, of that, even down to what you eat in terms of meats and not in certain types of meats, so even down sure. to organically what you want to have, which was far beyond their time. Yeah, they were ahead time, of the know? curve. <laughs> <laughs> at that time, even to the point of the, instead of doing milk, they did goat milk. So I very much understand that. And that's why this whole um, notion has fascinated me that you are so much in, in delved into and in, ingrained into the, qu the quickest way to train the mind is to train the body. Yeah. And so yoga, which we have something in common because I'm certified yoga instructor as well, Beautiful. but it's so true with that. What's, what's happened that we've gotten away from the understanding of the body and its importance to us? Because we have yeah. an epidemic for our youth of obesity. Absolutely. And, you know, I think, you know, we talked about this a little bit on the last episode, which was that we have become so achievement oriented and there's this really strong pull of the ego, right? And I think a lot of our society has started to treat us like we are heads on a stick figure, <laughs> right? That we are a brain that then has all these tasks and all of this energy to exert, and then we literally, because, I mean, our brains are powerful, they're incredible, but that notion that everything happens from the brain and that that is the whole of the mind, it just misses so much that our system can offer. And so we have turned ourselves into these brain machines that are just walking around, but then we forget about the intelligence of the body right? I mean, even, even from a physiologic perspective, the neurons of the heart, the neurons of the gut, like our whole, the way the fascia is now being talked about as its own brain, right? I mean, the, mm -hmm. our system has so much more intelligence and the communication between the, the mind and the brain is, or excuse me, the mind and the body is happening very regularly, but in fact, our body is giving more information to our brain than our brain is giving to our body. And so if we can, right, garner that up, bring that up to the, from the body to the mind, now there's something totally different available there. And how do we do that? Because I think that's the missing element is the how to. Yeah. Um, to have that kind of, one of the things we talked about last time in last episode, still time, stillness, silence, mm -hmm. to help to be able to have that resonating of the, the frequencies that are going on, like an orchestra on the body, instead of trying to silence it in a negative way, but how do we just be with it? But mm -hmm. I'm curious, but are there ways in which, you know, families and, and, um, and uh, others can be able to, or maybe not in families, but they are just wanting to learn how to have that connection for themselves. Yeah. What do you think? So there's a couple of things that come to mind. I think it's very easy to be jaded by the current kind of fitness culture of that. It has to be very pres prescriptive. It has to be done for certain volumes of time. It has to be done at a gym or at a studio or, you know, there's kind of this this whole thing that's being sold to us from the fitness industry. And I would just say, none of that has to be true. And so what might work for you? I hear all the time about how time is such a challenging constraint to then take care of the self. Okay, well, guess what? How, how long does it take to do 10 push-ups? Not long. <laughs> There's all these little ways, what I would call either spot drills or stacked practices that just insert into the normal flow of the day. And it doesn't mean you have to spend 30, 40, 50, two hours. You don't have to spend this 
specific chunk of time taking care of the body. But there's all kinds of ways to be in touch with the body, to train the body in really small but meaningful increments, and especially in families. And I hear that that's a, a big thing I hear is I'm, you know, out doing all these things with the kids. How do I still take time for myself? And that's a that's a huge way. The other thing in families is that the work of children is play. So our kids are playing all of the time and you see, and there's no, I say this with zero judgment because we're all doing the best with what we have. And sometimes when you go to the park with the kids, you actually need the five minutes to sit and answer an email or, you know, whatever it might be. So there's no judgment at all. But with that said, our kids are always wow. playing. And if we can meet them in that play, Mm. all of a sudden we're moving our body. We're um, building different weird types of strength, right? Like kids are climbing on all kinds of bizarre things and running into weird places and they're in the water and then they're on the grass and like they're everywhere. So we're training our bodies really dynamically and we're connecting at the same time. We're building bonds that are, you know, life-giving for both the children and the parents. So maybe it's not that you're going to cut out a section of time where you're quote unquote working out, but can we engage in those, you know, daily play activities that feel really delicious, not just for our body, but for the whole of us. So there's lots of little ways. If you love something, my goodness, if you love yoga, oh, how do you want to experience that? Where do you want to experience it? Do you want to try it in new places? Do you want to be outside? Do you want to be um, with a friend? I mean, there's if there's something you love, oh gosh, like how do you make that even more delicious for your system and your soul so that it becomes something almost like you have to do, mm -hmm. not something that, and I don't mean have to like, oh, I got to get there. Mm -hmm. I mean like mm -hmm. something that you're just, oh, I just can't wait to get there. If I don't do that today, my whole day is going to feel less mm -hmm. than it might otherwise. Mm -hmm. It's that wanting to do that it pulls us, you know, mm -hmm. to instead of feeling that we have to do it, pushing us, it may push us over. Yes, <laughs> you know? exactly. Um, so, and one of the qualities I, I hear you talking about is intentionality. Mm. So if we can be more intentional about these kind of many ways and M-I-N-I, -I, many ways yeah. that we can be able to engage in not only physical exercise, but also engagement with our children, that we have a twofer. It's a win, win situation. 100%. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We always mm -hmm. laugh because my husband and I, you know, end up being the parents who are on the playground and this is different. I mean, our kids are getting a lot older, but historically speaking, we would be the parents on the playground and not just our kids, but all of the kids would start to flock to us, right? They want to be part of the game. What are you doing? How can, is it okay if we play? And mm -hmm. that's mm -hmm. that it's so interesting because it's not, that wasn't happening until we were there. So it just goes to show how so desperate and so interested our kids are in that kind of connection that even kids who aren't my own, <laughs> are, who are perfect strangers to me, are coming to me to be part of this type of very simple, very natural, very organic movement and interaction that, yeah, it doesn't look like a normal workout, but you better put your fast shoes on. Like kids are going to catch you on the playground, right? I mean, you still have to, there's a certain level of fitness that's built by engaging mm -hmm. in those types of activities. Exactly. Like you're playing tag. You got to run. <laughs> you got to go. <laughs> <laughs> if you're playing tag. But it's, it's also a quality of innocence that children have. And they just automatically, as we're talking about energetically, are attracted to play and fun. And so if you're, as an adult, playing with them, they say, Can, me too, me too. I want to do that. And yeah. isn't that a wonderful level, not only just connection, but also a wonderful way of being fully present. Yes. And so sometimes that's the other missing element because we have our electronic devices. <laughs> and so we take the children to go to the playground to do what they want to do. And then we're on our electronic de device, which you're saying is it, that's fine to a certain degree, but to a larger degree, that presence and that being there, those are the memories that are being formed that are so for sure. powerful for children because they will always say, 
daddy my well, mommy remember we played blah 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 you know that was fun wasn't it and yeah. you say yeah you know it brings a smile to their face and it again it creates that connection at another level of being at the emotional level and at the mental level not just at the physical level as right. well right you know it's funny because my kids to this day a certain song will come on the radio and they'll be they'll always oh my gosh this is that song we always dance to you know blah 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 and they are, there are these memories that are created that we might not see as significant, but if just hearing the tune of a song puts a smile on your kid's face because, you know, there's this other thing connected to it, that's a pretty special thing to be able to create. And what you're saying about the intentionality of it, and that's the thing I think that we could, even if it's not, even if we're not creating some huge workout scheme or some huge practice that we're going to create and stick to, but the intentionality of how do I want to feel in my body? How can I engage in that with my children? How, um, how can I start to make space for my body to feel well? Even in my mind's eye, can I start to see what it would, can I put myself in a well feeling body, in a body that's in perfect health? What is it in my, even in my mind's eye, what does it feel like to be in that body? That's cool, right? Because now we're starting, we have an image, we have something we can start walking toward mm -hmm. and then the intention can become even stronger. Okay, interesting. So if I know that's available and even in my mental imagery, I can see that feeling a certain way. Huh, okay, now how am I gonna get there? And it's a lot easier to get there when you have that pull toward mm -hmm. what's available in a healthy, moving, connected body. And, uh, and that's, we don't do enough of that. We don't do enough for ourselves. We don't need, do enough for our kids but to help them to have that imagery that you're talking about, having that immaculate view about how I want to be and how that would feel great and how it feels strong. So it gives us the incentive to continue to move forward during times we're saying, I don't feel like it. Yes. <laughs> but I have this image <laughs> and I do want that image yes. <laughs> to happen. And so it, it again, it puts that pull to us, which is so important. And it's also helping children to understand that is in the process of having the image and striving for something and, and achieving it. And if having a greater sense of fulfillment, that greater sense of fulfillment also helps us to have a greater sense of a wellness. Because yes. we've worked on it and we realize this is feeling good and yeah. it moves us to self-mastery. Yes. And the confidence that comes from it, right? That, mm -hmm. wow, I can keep doing that mm -hmm. and I can do that in other arenas. And yes. that time I fell on my face and it felt like a weird or awkward thing, but I got back up. Wow. I can do that in other spaces. And, and my own experience is the quickest way to learn that is in the body, right? Because mm -hmm. let's take a more like weight training type workout. There are parts of that that are going to feel super hard. <laughs> You're not, not every rep is going to be like, ah, this is amazing. This is just the best thing I've ever done. Right. There are going to be parts of it that you you can experience like every emotion, every mental pattern you can experience while training the body. And it, and it happens quickly you know, I'm in this exercise and this thing is the thing I think about. I'm in this other, now instead of lifting weights, I'm running and whoa, my mind does this totally other thing over here. And it's so blatantly obvious because you go from being, going through your daily life to mm -hmm. now all of a sudden I'm exerting and there's this hyper kind of awareness that comes with that. And it's like this enormous gift because now I can see my mind. I can see what's happening between my ears and I can see what's happening as different emotions arise just because I'm using my body. And to your mm -hmm. point about the stillness, right? If what happens to you when you're sitting and quiet is awful for you and it doesn't feel good right away, cool. There's some really exciting information that Maybe there's, maybe I need to burn off more steam. Maybe I need to expend more energy or eliminate more toxins or clean up my diet so that when I do come to stillness, it's not so chaotic. My mind isn't racing. My mind does know how to become more quiet. And so that whole gamut from I'm not moving to I'm 
<laughs> really exerting every step along that way has a different mental pattern, a different emotional state that will rise up during it. And we can then whew, use it for our, how we want to train and how we want to practice various yeah. things in our lives to keep growing. That is so true. And it, and it reminds me of the quality of the soul and the soul needing guidepost along mm. the way the journey that they're on. And sometimes by you taking either still time or you're aware that you just kind of continue to evolve and to figure it out as you're moving forward, but your soul's there too, trying to help you to be able to do that. And so the more that we invite our soul and ask our intuition about what is it that I need to do or how do I need to do it today? Because it may be different than I did it yesterday, but I am still intentional about what I want to do and how I want to continue to grow mentally, emotionally. So that connection that you're talking about is sometimes what has been the missing element mm -hmm. that the, the life journey that we're going on through exercise or through understanding the body and the movement that the body needs to have is also at the mental, emotional, spiritual and, and memory levels and many different levels that are happening that allows us to integrate. And in, the, in, and in that process of integrating, we realize we have a true greater sense of wholeness and centeredness and balance. Yeah. And that's wonderful. Oh my gosh. That's powerful. Yeah. And it's really what we're all looking for, right? And, and I can understand why we can get tripped up in any one of these realms. Um, for instance, in the corporate kind of business world space, which I spend quite a bit of time in, those there's so much focus on the mental capacity that there's all these ways to train the mind, all these ways to train the mindset, all, and it becomes this very kind of laser focused. And, and I can see how we get caught in the weeds of that because there are so many things. If you just are just quote unquote training mindset that you could be doing so many things, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but when you come back to the body, the body has all of this information and it is the house of all these things that are happening and so when we use the body as a training mechanism the training of the mindset it feels easier because it's more specific if we see what happens to the mind when something is hard for instance and in, when we're moving our body now all of a sudden i know is it my pattern of thinking is it that um i have really negative language that i use toward myself is there like like the the specific thing we have to train becomes very very obvious and then okay, now we're using our body to train our physical state and all these things, but now we're allowing it to simplify the way we train the whole rest of our system because it becomes hyper-specific to what is actually happening for you right now instead of this incredible number of things you could be doing to train any one aspect of yourself, but maybe it's not even going to hit the mark because that's not the thing that's really coming up for you consistently. Right. So the body just, gosh, it just, boom, highlight, highlight, highlight in all these different areas. And it just simplifies everything. Cause now I'm doing this to train my mindset. And now I'm doing this to train the emotion that keeps popping up and I don't want to deal with. And now it, it's just, oh, okay, great. I'm doing the thing that I actually need <laughs> to right. keep moving forward instead of this gamut of things that honestly is impossible to keep up with. We can't do every practice under the sun to train our spirit, to train our mind, to train our body. Like we can't do all of it. So how do we start to narrow it so that it's specific and useful to us? And the body is a really good way to <laughs> get mm -hmm. to those specifics. Mm -hmm. It's like the, the, and I think you alluded to it earlier too, the innate intelligence of the body. And I think sometimes with the innate intelligence, I sometimes talk to my, my coaching clients about is, is that the body has an innate intelligence. And what we're learning to do is to understand the innate intelligence of the body. And it's speaking German. You speak yeah. English. <laughs> <laughs> you <know>? Yes, <laughs> uh, and you're learning German. So as you learn the German or the French or you know whatever language, as you're learning the language of the body, it's it's now in many different frequencies that is showing itself mentally, emotionally, spiritually, and physically at all these different levels that it's allowing you to be able to say, "Oh, I got it." Because the intellectual mind will always say, "I know what it is. I know what we need to do. We just need to do this over here." Mm -hmm. got, no, but that's 
the, did you learn the German of the body? <laughs> yeah. Well, and I think something, and this is my own experience. I don't have a lot of context to expand this to, but my own experience is that the language of the body is not spoken. We don't understand the language of the body in words that our brain takes and makes meaning of. The language of the body is an understanding. It's a knowingness. And it's almost, it almost becomes something we don't have to quote unquote think about. It is just understood. And I think for a lot of people, that's mm. really hard to grasp because we're so attached to the mental models and the language of the mind. And our mind is responsible for making meaning. I can understand why we get you know really attached to the brain has to know something about this. Mm -hmm. But the intelligence of the body doesn't speak like that. And so we have to kind of get comfortable with like, oh, there's something, I just move in a different way toward this thing. Interesting. It doesn't have to have a meaning. Not everything has to have this language that's understood by the mind. That's another way of thinking about that. I was thinking about one of the qualities of the body talks like an orchestra in different mm. frequencies. Uh, and those frequencies, we label it as different languages but it's different frequencies, different totally. vibrations. Um, and, and it's also a quality of, we have felt sensations. Mm -hmm. We don't know what they mean or what they are, but if we are intuitive and we understand and through silence that you were talking about earlier, and also become more aware of the fact that the soul knows. Yes. And as we came into our soul, we just, as you're saying, naturally move in a certain direction that we need to move in, do what we need to do, because we're more willing to sit sometimes with things. It's like in, as you practice yoga, you were saying earlier, and you may practice meditation. You know, you even if it's just a five-minute meditation, you're just sitting because it's helping to settle yourself into yourself and into the, the body and not being afraid of it. And I think some people are afraid of their bodies. Well, and we've been so deeply taught to disconnect from them, right? I, I mean, even let's take somebody who's like an elite athlete. You might think that that person is hyper connected to their body because it moves really well. It has all these dynamics that it can position itself in and, you know, power and endurance and all these things. But a lot of those people have been taught that you don't feel pain. Yeah. Oh, well, that's interesting. What do you mean? You play on sprained and broken and whatever, whatever, whatever. Well, that is just a learning of disconnecting from the body. So this is, this is taught across the spectrum from people who are actually very disconnected from their body because they're, you know, hyper attuned to the mind and don't spend a lot of time moving and those types of things. That's one end of the spectrum, but all the way on the other end of the spectrum where you have hyper trained, hyper physical people, and they're taught to disconnect from their bodies too. So we have to be sensitive as we start to train our system that if we have Let's say you haven't felt the bottoms of your feet, like you can't remember a time where you felt the bottom of your feet. Okay, well, mm -hmm. it's going to take some time to feel okay mm -hmm. putting your attention in the bottom of your feet, which for some people listening, they might be like, oh, what? Like, that is not that big of a deal. But if your system has been very disconnected from the body, that is going to take some time and it's going to be uncomfortable. And I'm also kind of as a caveat, really sensitive to, for people who have experienced, especially in their young life, a lot of trauma, that is a survival mechanism to cut the, self, the mind and system off right. from the body. And so I'm super sensitive to that, that there could be a lot of reasons that the body is disconnected and they're not all frivolous and they're not all just going to change because I decided to go do a yoga practice. So there's a lot of reasons we're disconnected, but if we can start to rebuild that connection, we don't want the body to be storing pain. We don't want the body to be storing, you know, something less than what we really are. We want the body to be an expression of the fullness that we have in our bigger, broader system. Right. And situations are on pain, pain and trauma. Um, sometimes it, it, we have to be sensitive to the fact that why we don't have that sensitivity towards our soul because right. of that disconnection that, that happens. And so it, we are 
what you're talking about is having an attunement with the fact that it's a, it's a process and one step at a time. So wherever the person is at, wherever the seeker is at, is like, how do, where do I want to begin with some of the things that we're talking about? Because one of the things with pain and trauma, it creates static. Mm. And so it kind of, in that staticness of things, we don't know, we can't spar a fog. Um, so we can't, you know, see through the fog, but by doing the small acts of kindness towards self and being more attuned, you know, to some of the things that you've been talking about, it helps to reduce that fog, reduce that static, and allows us to see a greater sense of liveliness or fullness or centeredness that we're seeking. And so you've been, been talking about little how-tos, you know, yeah. to be able to make that happen for ourselves under the auspices of there's many different things that will get us disconnected from ourselves. <laughs> uh, and and that's okay. And not to, to look at it from the standpoint of that's bad or that's good. No, it's actually looking from the point of it's awareness. I'm feeling that awareness. What I want to do about it. Yeah. And that's freedom, right? That when you get to make the choice instead of just, I have to, and my system only knows this thing. Anytime. Yeah. Anytime we get to make a choice based on awareness, that becomes a superpower. And that's a fun thing to see people come into. It feels very liberating and exciting to be in a space where I have enough awareness about my body, about my mind, about any one thing that's happening, that now I get to make a choice about it. And that's where that curiosity piece comes back in, right? Because the way we can communicate that, let's say in our family, is that those are the words we can use, right? So that our kids hear us like, oh, isn't that interesting? I'll use a really simple example. Like so interesting. My left hip just really hurts today. I wonder what that could be about. It's like the simplest, <laughs> it, not because, oh, my hip hurts. Like, oh, what did I do? Something must be mm -hmm. wrong with it, right? Mm -hmm. But like, oh, interesting. I have a different sensation in my hip today. I wonder what that could mean. Hmm. Mm -hmm. something as simple as that, right? Like now there's a choice. Do I, do I like this sensation? Does it feel good? Is it there because I trained hard? Is it there because I've been working on gaining strength in my left hip? Or is there something that does feel uncomfortable and that discomfort is actually going to give me a piece of information that allows me to walk towards something different. And so, yeah, there's lots of ways we can keep these little nuances alive so that our kids get to learn how to have that choice and awareness as well. Yeah, and helping them to understand what you've said so um, wonderfully before is curiosity. You know, and helping to keep the curiosity alive. And it's also by the mere fact that we talk to ourselves, we're expecting a response. Yeah, And that's a good thing. <laughs> <laughs> so true. <laughs> And it will give us a response if we kind of keep ourselves open to that. And they're saying, totally. no, it's because of what you did, da, 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 da. Or because of, you know, we need to do more, da, 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 da. But that yes. listening grace that we find ourselves in is a wonderful thing for our kids to learn how to do. Uh -huh. Yes. Gift of yeah. parenting. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And which is the, a real, I think families have a wonderful opportunity of helping their children as well as themselves as parents with mastery, getting mm -hmm. back to that word, yeah. <laughs> mastery in this, in, in this light, we're talking about the wellness, but also underneath that is that the quickest way to train the mind is to train the body. Yeah. It's all coming together. Yes. One, one whole being. And yeah, that's like uh, just one more thing that kind of comes to mind as you say that it's like, okay, if the body is this, is this hyper useful thing to see the mind, to see the emotions, to see the things that are happening in my system, something even simpler that we can use in the physical body is breath. Mm -hmm. If you want to change your state, if you want to see what's happening in your mind, simply taking one deep breath is like shining a light on what is happening. And so to kind of the earlier point, like, how do you start to make these things happen? Do you want to start a workout? Awesome. Do you want to take on a particular practice? Beautiful. But let your kids, let the people around you start seeing you take one deep breath when you're not sure the next move, right? And, and that is a physical practice that informs the mind, that informs the motions, that heightens awareness, right? So it yes. doesn't have to be some huge, vast thing. Even a few deep breaths are going to be a physical experience 
that offers insight to the mind. Excellent. That's so true. It's these many, many things we do that took a nanosecond to do. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> that can be so powerful. 100%. Yes. If you were to want to leave our seekers with a uh, statement or a comment or additional pearl of wisdom, what would that be? I think it would be find the thing that you can start today. If with this awareness that it, the way to train our whole system can come from starting to train the body, if that's a new awareness or a heightened awareness, what's the th small thing that then starts now? If it's a deep breath, is it feeling your feet? I mean, there's all these little ways. Is it doing 10 pushups between meetings? I mean, there's a lot of ways to start connecting to the body. So with this awareness, with this perspective, what is the one thing you would do today that starts to connect you deep, more deeply to the body? Excellent call. And I invite our seekers to think about that and engage in it. Yes. <laughs> <I'll> be... <laughs> and notice what happens in your body and start being curious about it. Yes. Thank you so much for joining me on this segment of part two. In this whole issue of the quickest way to train the mind is to train the body. And for our speakers, what are you going to do next? And you can reach Cole at thetotalpotential.com. Thank you for joining me for this episode on Mastering Life's Adventures, being your best self through soul evolution. If you have enjoyed what you've heard today, I would be delighted if you would share this episode with others. Leave a thumbs up and subscribe to my Master in Life's Adventures podcast. Look forward to your joining the next episode. Please leave any comments or suggestions you might have below. Bye for now.